Hello and welcome. This is going to be our lecture video for April 23rd. We're starting a new unit today all about probability. Uh, so we need to talk today about the fundamental counting principle. All right. So imagine this is on page 425 if you want to follow along in your textbook. Uh, do have your notes out. Go ahead and put today's date on them. Now imagine that there's eight pieces of paper in a box and they're numbered one through eight. One piece of paper is drawn out, its number is written down, and it is replaced. A second is drawn out and it's added to the first. How many different ways can a sum of 12 be obtained? So I need to get to the sum of 12. So if I draw out a one, it's not possible. If I draw out a two, it's not possible because that only goes up to eight. What's the smallest first number that I can get? The smallest first number I could get would be a four, and then I draw out an eight, uh, and that is one way to get to 12. All right, and now to get to the next possibility, we can just increase this one by one, decrease this one by one, so five and seven. We can then do six and six. This is allowed. You might have to think about this one though, because if it didn't say that it is replaced, then this one wouldn't be possible. All right, and then you should ask yourself, should we keep going? Is seven and five different than five and seven? Well, I think in this scenario it is because you're drawing them out one at a time, writing them down. So I think drawing on a seven and then a five is a different event than drawing on a five and then a seven. All right, and then we can also do an eight first and then a four. All right, so this right here, all we're doing is counting up possibilities. This is often the hardest part of a probability problem is making sure you didn't miss one. And it gets much harder when you can't list them out and you have to rely on math to make sure you counted them all. So our goal today is to understand how to count up possibilities in a sample space. And why are we doing this? Just like I said, counting is sometimes the hardest part of a probability problem. All right, so what is a sample space? So that is the definition to sample space to our notes. It is a list of all possible outcomes of an event. And an event in probability is, uh, well, it's just like an event in real life, but it is a very specific moment in time where something with different outcomes can occur. So, you know, the, the famous ones from probability uh, are rolling a dice. So roll a die or roll a die, pick a card, Um, it could also refer to something like uh, the weather on a certain day. I mean, that's unknown. And it has kind of somewhat discrete um, outcomes, it can either be rainy or not. Uh, and then there's lots of examples from sports, uh, like uh, if you shoot a basketball. If you had perfect information about the flight of that basketball, you would know with certainty whether or not it's gonna go in or not. But nobody has all that information, especially before the players even shot the basketball. We just know that when a certain uh, player shoots a basketball, they have a certain percentage chance of making or missing that shot. And so the basketball has uh, you know, a, a probable outcome of either going in or going or not going in. Uh, same thing with rolling a die. If you had perfect information, you could. This wouldn't really be a probability problem. You would just know what side uh, side's going to land facing up. But we don't have that. But we know that the variables are random enough that you get one through six pretty evenly. All right, uh, and uh, for most probability problems, you want the events to be equally likely. Now, I think like weather on a certain day, that's not equally likely. 
but we have ways of weighting those types of problems. But most of the simple ones we're going to look at, all of the events are equally likely. All right, so what is the sample space of rolling an eight-sided die? So one thing, when we list down a sample space, we use curly brackets. You probably saw it in that first problem. I use some curly brackets. And then I'm going to separate the different events with commas. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are all of the possible outcomes. So curly brackets and commas. And that is kind of your indication that this is a sample space. All right. What is the sample space of picking a soda at Subway? Well, curly brackets. And then we could just list the, uh, the possibilities. I see we got a Coca-Cola zero there. Coca-Cola zero. We've got a Fanta, looks like root beer. Mm, can't tell what that one is. Another Fanta, Diet Coke. Alma, dot, dot, dot. So this should show you that it doesn't always have to be numbers in a sample space. We can have uh, just words as long as we're separating them out by commas, it's still a sample space. Uh, but what if, uh, what if we want ice? So how do I modify the sample space if I want to include the possibility of having ice or not ice? Or what if you want to do what I did as a kid, which is mix multiple soda flavors together? We're going to have to have a different way to express that. So, what if we have two events where we want to do the same action multiple times? Um, so we have multiple times, like, you know, we're not always going to take just one basketball shot or roll just one dice. We might roll that dice seven times. I want to know all the possible outcomes. Uh, so here's what we do. We need to abbreviate. Uh, and then we need to pair up letters. Abbreviate, pair up letters. Um, yeah, I think this will make more sense with an example. So we are making toast with either white or rye bread, and then we're gonna put on it either strawberry or blueberry jam. I'm gonna list all the possible ways I can make this toast. So in the problem itself, this is the easiest way to do this is write out your abbreviation. White is gonna be W, rye is gonna be R, strawberry is gonna be S, blueberry is gonna be B. Now I can do my curly brackets and you need to kind of have a system so that you make sure you get all of them. So I'm going to do white bread with all the toppings, then I'm going to do rye bread with all the toppings. If there was another type of bread, then I would do that bread with all the toppings. So WS, WB, so that means white bread with strawberry, white bread with blueberry, RS, RB, and that's all of them. Notice in this list, there is no WR. You might feel like, oh, well, that one's missing, but that doesn't make any sense. We needed to pick one type of bread and one type of jam. This would mean putting rye bread on top of white bread. You don't want to do that. And there's no WW either. All right, we had to do uh, one of each, and we did it systematically to make sure we got all of them. Yeah, I know it seems simple here. We just have four combinations but there'll be times where we've got, you know, dozens of combinations and it's easy to miss one. Like this one here. What is the sample space of taking four basketball shots? So if it's not obvious, we are doing the possible combinations of hits and misses. 
I know when you make a basketball shot, it's normally called a make, but to have makes and misses, that could get confusing. So we're gonna, when you make a basket, we're gonna call it a hit. When you miss one, we're gonna call it a miss. And this is actually pretty typical of probability problems. We do hits and misses for all sorts of things, um, just to make it simple. All right, hits is gonna be H, misses is gonna be M. So we're gonna take four basketball shots. What's the possible ways that this can happen? Well, you can make all four. So hit, 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 hit. All right, you made all four, you got eight points. All right, you can also miss, 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 but I don't wanna to go to that one yet. I wanna make sure I'm doing this in a logical way so I get all of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only change the last spot. Hit, 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 miss. All right, now if there's a third possibility, now I would sub that into the last spot but I've already covered the last two spots there, so now I'm gonna switch it to hit, hit, miss. So I, I switch the second one to a, or the second last one to a miss, that frees up this very last one to go back to being a hit again, and then I'm gonna have the last combination with hit, hit, miss, miss. So that's every combination possible with having the first two be hits. All right, now that I've like build up these last two with misses. Now it's the second one that becomes a miss and everything else resets. So it's hit, miss, hit, hit. And now we're kind of, we're free to follow this pattern for the last two. So, but with just a hit, miss in front. So we hit, miss, hit, miss. Hit, miss, miss, hit. And hit, miss, miss, miss okay now that we've tried um missing in the third spot now the very first one becomes uh, a miss the second one is now a hit because that one's kind of freed up and then we follow this pattern again so miss hit hit miss miss hit Miss, hit, miss, hit, miss, miss. All right, and now we wanna try all those combinations again, but with a miss, miss at the front. So miss, miss, hit, hit. Miss, miss, hit, miss. Miss, 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 hit. And then our very last one, is we're the worst basketball player ever. Miss, 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 miss. Time to take us off the court. Okay, so you know, it can be very tricky to make sure you get every single combination. But what you'll realize is we're actually following the pattern of counting. If you think about counting, when you're counting up by numbers, you're filling up the, the ones digit first until you run out of spots in the ones digit, then you move on to the tens digit. But this is like counting in binary when you only have two options. And it's, it's tricky because it resets so quickly and then it kind of becomes just alphabet soup here with all the H's and M's. So what's really important is that we know some math here about how many we're expecting so that we get all of them. And I'll show you this here. If we're taking, if the first option has two possibilities and the second option has two possibilities and the third option has two possibilities and the fourth option has two possibilities, the total sample size should be two times two times two times two which is 16. Count these up, we've got a four by four block, that is 16 possibilities. All right, so that's how we can be sure we got them all. Uh, all right, so if I've got a blue, or no, a red, a blue, and a green ball in a bag, and I'm picking two at the same time, what is my sample space of events? So you're picking them at the same time, so you can't get blue, blue, because there's only one blue in there. You can get red, blue. You can get red, green. And you can get blue, green. All right. If you're picking them at the same time, order doesn't really matter because uh, they don't have like a temporal quality. It's not like the blue was first, the green was second. They're, you reached in, grabbed two of them, and brought them out at the same time. And this is every combination possible. But what if I pick one 
and I don't replace the first one. Now there is this temporal equality that one gets to be first and one gets to be second, but I'm not replacing the first one. So let's see, this is gonna be, we could do red, blue, red, green, but I can't do red, red because I didn't replace the red ball. So I've got to move on to blue, red, blue, green, or green, red, green, blue. And then I've got them all. Now, what if I pick two, but I do replace the first ball, but the order does matter. So this is similar to the first one. Well, maybe it's more similar to the second one. Uh, but I can go red, red, because I, I pick out the red, but I put the red back in, so now it's in there to be picked. Uh, I can also go red, blue, red, green. This is more similar to the basketball ones right now, uh, where you can, you just sort of have to list them all out. Uh, I can go blue, red, Actually, maybe I should start with blue, blue. Oh well. Blue, 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 green. That was just fine. Green, red, green, blue, green, green. All right, and I'll show you the math to figure out these sizes, but you're gonna have to wait for this to all totally be explained. Uh, this very first one, where uh, I'm just picking two, um, but the order doesn't matter because they're picked at the same time. This is 3C2. I'll teach you what that means later. This one where the order does matter but I'm picking two is 3P2. With like a small three, a big P, and a small two. And then this one here is just three squared. This one would maybe make a little bit more sense because it's three options for the first times three options for the second or three times three which is nine. Count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine options. All right, the fundamental counting principle. So if event one can happen, M number of ways, and event two can happen n number of ways combined they can happen m times n number of ways. All right, so very simple. You know, if I'm doing two things, they can both have a certain number of outcomes. If you do both things back to back, you just multiply to get the number of combinations. All right, so go back to our soda example. If we had eight options for soda, if we want to include the possibility of adding ice, well, adding ice has two possibilities, either with ice or without ice. Now we're up to 16 possibilities, eight times two. So it's every soda with ice and then every soda without ice. Okay, how many different pairs of letters from the English alphabet are possible? This would actually take a really long time to list out because you would have AA, AB, AC, dot 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 all the way to ZZ. So there'd be 26 ways to pair a letter with A, then 26 with B, then 26 with C. So we can just think of this as letter one and then letter two. Twenty-six times twenty-six. Got my calculator right here. I can just do 26 squared. I get 676 combinations. All right, now be very careful if like the problem says we're not allowed to repeat letters 
or order doesn't matter, then this becomes a very different problem. But if it's just pairs of letters, then 676. Okay, here's a problem related to Colorado. Uh, so Colorado has four different area codes. You got 970, which is like Summit County, all the way down to Telluride, uh, then across the north side of the state, getting like Fort Collins and Greeley. Um, you got 303 and 720, which are uh, we're just the Denver Boulder area. Once all the 303s got used up in this area, then they went over the 720s, but there's no real um, geographic divide between those two. And then the 719, which starts at Colorado Springs, goes down to Pueblo, goes over to uh, like Canyon City and Salida and gets all of uh, this corner of the state. So we got four possible area codes. The fourth number of a telephone number can't be a zero or a one, which is sort of a rule. Uh, but then the rest of the numbers can be whatever. So how many possible phone numbers are there in Colorado? So we've got the area code at the beginning. And we said there are four possibilities. All right, then you got the dash, and then you've got three numbers, another dash, then four more numbers. All right, but we said this number here could only be two through nine, so there's eight numbers there. But then we got 10 possible digits for this one, 10 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 for this one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do 4 times 8 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Um, to do this part in your calculator, you could do 10 to the 6th and then multiply it by 8 and then multiply that by 4. And we get... 32 million. There are six zeros there. Uh, all right, so 32 million possible phone numbers in Colorado. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the population of Colorado is, but uh, I think that means there's you know four or five phone numbers per person available. But if you consider that you know people have got a work phone, a cell phone, maybe a home phone. Um, we're probably getting close to maybe even needing another uh, area code. And when you add in just uh, one more possibility, you increase this to a five. So if instead of a four, we multiplied by a five, we would have now 40 million. So each time you increase this by one, you get eight million more possibilities. All right, so, and I think that's interesting enough to write down. Increase by one gets you eight million more numbers. Because now you can just do every, every phone number that exists with just that new area code. Okay. Uh, how many different ways can I pick a letter? So that's 26 ways. Then a one digit number. There's 10 ways to do that. Then flip a coin. How many outcomes are possible with flipping a coin? Two. And then roll a six sided die. There's six. To figure this out, I'm just going to multiply them all. So 26 times 10 times 2 times 6. It's easy to know that we're using the fundamental counting principle when they're different totally different events because we don't have to worry about like overlap or not replacement it just has to be this way so 26 times 10 times 2 times 6 is 3120 different unique outcomes of those four events okay uh, there's a worksheet with a bunch more of these and have a great